Welcome to video four in our year 10 science unit where we are looking at human evolution. So before we can look at this, we just need to cast our mind back to year seven when we looked at the classification of species. And in this example here, we've got our red fox. But the reason that I've put this slide in is because I need you to be thinking about like species, genus, family, order, class, phylum, kingdom and domain okay because when we start thinking about human evolution we need to start looking at other species within the same order as ourselves okay so let's have a look so when we look at humans as a species, we are looking at the Homo sapiens. OK, and you can see on the left hand side here, you can see the classification of Homo sapiens. And you'll see that um, the order were part of the primates, OK, mammals um, and that order being primates. So when you look on the right hand side, um, this has all the subgroups as well in it. But look at order primates and you'll see that in those little illustrations there we've got gorillas we've got chimpanzees we've got lemurs i think they are so there's a lot of primates in the order of primates and you'll see as you move down the sub groups as well as the main groups that you've been taught that um yeah slowly there's less and less um, species that share commonalities with the humans and we go right down to then the tribe of the hominy okay and there we've got just the chimpanzee and the human that share um, characteristics so let's have a look a bit further at that and see what that's got to do with human evolution so looking again at our primates we can see that there are a lot of primates and they share very similar characteristics so the question when it comes to evolution is have they evolved from the same ancestral creature as such and that's what our fossil record dna analysis and things like that are now pointing towards so in terms of primate, the characteristics that primates all share, they all have forward facing eyes, okay, which means they um, can see out in front of them, they can um, see any issues ahead of them, which means they have to turn to see um, anything behind or around them, okay, so they're forward facing eyes. Whereas if you think of the fly, the fly has eyes that can see 360 degrees around or 180 degrees per eye. Five thing, fingers and toes on each limb. They have opposable thumbs, so opposite thumbs. They have nails, not claws. And they have generally a large brain for their body size. So all these characteristics of our primates. OK, now if we move from our um, order to the family now, so we're looking at the homine, homidae, OK, and here we've actually just got rid of the lemurs, OK, and now we've got pongo, gorilla, pan and homo, OK. so. Let's have a look at what we're looking at. All right. So here we've got Pongo, Gorilla, Human, Homo, and Pan, Chimpanzee. Okay. So very, very similar. Now you might look at that and go, they are not similar. Compare them to a cow. Compare them to a potato plant. Compare them to an elephant. Okay, they have many similar similarities compared to other species. Okay, so you're getting more and more refined. You've got those forward facing eyes. You've got those limbs with the five digits on each end. Okay, so there are many similarities there. But if we were to compare and contrast what we've got, similarities, forward facing eyes, five fingers and toes on each limb, opposable thumbs, the nails, 
and not claws and large brains the size of their body. If we look specifically at the humans, some of the things that are different compared to the other species in that family, humans have a waist. Okay, so our skeleton and our posture means that we have that waistline. Humans have shins that go straight down. Okay, whereas when we look at the skeleton in a moment of the chimpanzee, you'll see that their shins do not run straight down. Now, humans' hips are generally shorter and wider than those other primates. Their jaws are shorter. Quite often, jaws are jaws change due to diet, okay, and different things that are eaten. And humans tend to have larger brains, okay? So there are some differences and there are some similarities. So if you've ever asked in a question to compare and contrast, you need to ensure that you do choose differences because by saying um, primates have forward facing eyes and then saying, um, that's only, by saying that, you're only comparing, okay? You also need to say some of the things that are different. All right, so here, when you look at the two skeletons, you can really see, now, we're down to tribe now. The chimpanzee is the closest relative or ancestral relative to the human. And look at the difference in these skeletons. Look at the difference in their structure, in the, um, look at the length of the arms, okay? The orientation of that shin that we were just speaking about. Even if you looked at the jaw structure, there are quite differences, even though they're so similar. Okay, so Homo sapiens, our species, genus Homo, okay, Homo sapiens. So it means wise man. Homo sapien means wise man. Okay, according to fossil records, human like species have been around for 200,000. 200,000 years. Fossils indicate that other species of human-like animals have existed too. So this is an area that really is quite um, new in terms of research at the moment. So we've got the fossil evidence and now we're actually being able to look at things like DNA as well, which is fascinating. So biologists and paleontologists have a good idea about how humans came to be here. But there are differing opinions and more fossil evidence is needed to actually be able to trace the original origins of the Homo sapiens. So it's biologists and paleontologists have kind of worked out that ancestral lineage. But the question of where the the family as such or the um yeah, that species actually began is the big question. And there's a few different theories on this. We have a debatable lineage. Okay, so some suggest that Homus erectus evolved worldwide and then evolved into Homo sapiens, but retained local features. So that explains the different forms of Homo sapien in different countries. Okay, so valid, makes sense. Now, some also suggest that Homo sapiens evolved in Africa and spread from there 200,000 years ago. Recent DNA analysis supports this out of Africa theory. Okay, so we've got these two different ideas. There are more than two ideas, but these are our key ones. Yet at this stage, we're only just getting the evidence to support one over the other. And it does come down to this DNA analysis. And these techniques are only just newly developed. There's evidence in the skull structure of humans that does lead to some of this decision making. This is now being superseded by DNA analysis. Okay, but because of the skull structure of the Homo sapien, Homo erectus, they can see that there is a there is evolution there. The skulls have developed from one to the other. Okay, so if you look at these, these are potential 
family trees as such. Um, the one on the left is a cladogram. You'll see them further if you do senior biology. Um, and yeah, you can see that skull structure and how they think that um, different tribes have kind of shot off on the ancestral history. But here's a question, where to next? How are our, our, how is our species changing as we speak? Because we are, okay? Our species is fluid, our genetics are fluid. We are evolving through generation and generation. So where to next? Interesting question. Thanks for watching this video. And I hope it's given you a good insight into our introduction to human evolution.